Okay, you're in. Hi, everybody. This is Diane McAdams. I'm the chair of the Fair Rent Commission, and I'm calling the meeting to order at 532. At this time, I'll turn it over to Bonnie. You want to do uh, minutes first? Oh, yes. Um, can I get uh, someone to um, give me a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make I move a motion. to accept the minutes. Okay. Susan, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Is there any discussion at this time? Hearing none, um, the minutes uh, stand as read. Okay, then my role is to explain to everybody how this works. Um, I'm Bonnie Therian. I'm the interim town manager here in Wethersfield. And uh, Diane, I'm sure as chair in a minute is gonna ask all of you to introduce yourselves. And then um, what's gonna happen is um, we start off, everybody will get sworn in who's gonna speak. As you start to speak, I will swear you in. And then um, the um, Janice, you will start off. Uh, Diane will just read your um, email so that everybody understands what it is. But then you can start off kind of giving an overview of your concerns. And um, then uh, if there's questions from the commissioners, they will ask those. And then we will go on um, over to Brett, because you are the one representing management, correct? Yes, I am. Thank okay. you. Okay. So Brett gets sworn in. Same thing happens. Brett responds to whatever's been said. Um, the commission members can ask questions. Mm -hmm. And then we go back. And if there's any witnesses for either side, it'll kind of go back and forth. Then the commission um, can hear from them, ask questions. Um, if there's no further questions, the hearing closes and then the commission deliberates. And so I don't know if anybody has any questions before we start. Um, if not, Madam Chair, do you wanna read the initial um, letter that came in? Or do you wanna, why don't you have people introduce themselves? That probably makes more sense. Yes. Okay, so I already introduced myself. So um, I'll go around the room and let me see. I have Sue. Su to... Yes, Susan Grady. I'm a regular citizen. I'm not knowledgeable about real estate, but I've been on the Fair Rent Commission for many years. And uh, for many years, we had no meetings. And this year, we've had many, not many meetings, but more <laughs> than the last 10 years. Um, and I live on West Look Road. That's all I can say. Okay. Uh, Lindsay, you look next on my list. Hi, I am Lindsay Jones. I am a renter here in Wethersfield. I live on Back Lane. I have also been on the commission for a number of years and are just having meetings this year as well. So happy to meet you both. I don't think we can hear you, Diane. It says you're not muted, but we just can't hear you. Oh. No, for some reason we can't hear you. I think she's trying to figure it out. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, we did the whole time and then all of a sudden, Brett, you cursed us. I'm sorry, I told you, <laughs> I was waiting for it. Well, while she's trying to figure it out, why don't we go around, Tony? Tony Holmicky, I live on Garden Street. I'm representing the landlord's position for the, uh, for the uh, committee for tonight's uh, sessions. All right, so those are all the committee members and then we're gonna end up uh, meeting each of you. Uh, Diane, are you back on yet? No. Nope. All of a sudden we lost you. Um, all right. Let's see. How are we going to do that? Oh, you know what? We'll do it this way. I'll play. I'll play chair for a bit. Diane, sometimes when this happens to me, I just have to totally leave Zoom and come back in. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that too. Um, 
Center chat. Lindsay, do you do you perchance because I really shouldn't get involved in this? Lindsay, do you perchance have Janice's um, initial email from April fifteenth that you could read into the record? Um, I sure can find it. Um, I have it. I have it. I took notes and I wrote it for word for word. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Sue. So. Okay, uh, she reported um, after getting her lease renewal and lease reported um, the problem of being concerned and displeased. The complex was sold unannounced and followed by a surprising I'm not, an obnoxious request for a rental increase for those with expiring leases. Tenants, some elderly and disabled are unable to meet such a demand of 33 to 44% hike. On the lease, it said it was rent was now twenty three hundred fifty dollars. My lease ends five thirty one twenty two, and with an asking price of four hundred and five dollars additional is ludicrous and unacceptable. We have been contacted and harassed to have our account up to date when we have never been late for payments. We continue to make regular the regular amount agreed upon by former owners and have never been late. We tried to contact management to no avail. I look forward to what can be done to halt or prevent such a large hike. And then on April 24th, she said that the management is Empire, which was already set on the lease and the loan is the representative on site and contact number is the number on the correspondence, which no one answers. My husband and I went to um, see her on last Friday. Today, this was from the 24th, the Friday before that, to discuss negotiations. She said the um, owner will go below the increase only $50. He has costs and he has to compensate for the purchase of the property. Um, we could sign the new lease for that amount or upon expiration of our lease, we have 30 days to vacate. Um, I'm paying month to month, the requested amount of 2350 without a signed contract will put us in eviction procedures. Now, can, Janice okay. can correct me if I'm wrong on that. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, all right, Janice, if you could raise your right hand and say, uh, do you solemnly swear um, and sincerely affirm as the case may be that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God or upon penalty of perjury. Yes, I do. Okay. All right, your turn, Janice. And Diane's gonna go in and try again. Okay. But it's all, it, go ahead, take the time you need. Okay, so like Susie, Susie, right? Susan, 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 yeah. Susan, Susan said um, to everyone who heard, that is true. Um, we were unannounced sold. Um, we were all shocked, of course. And um, we were given or sent a letter by Empire Realty Management on the 10th basically stating what their procedures will be, who we can contact and what methods we can pay and, and where we can send a payment, uh, which was okay. Thank you for the information. Um, however, upon by June 23rd, my husband received a knock on the door and was given a lease notice, which basically stated, reiterated what I had said that um, we will find a lease in a lease enclosed, which stated how much the amount would be twenty three hundred and fifty dollars, um, two thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Sorry, and that um, we can sign the lease ASAP. It stated also that beginning next week, a property manager would be on site, which that manager was not always available. I mean, we worked during the day, we can't always get to the office. So most of us resorted to calling, which with that calling, you don't necessarily get an answer back or you didn't get um, anyone on the phone. Um, my husband did receive 
two emails from um, Brett. Uh, I don't have access to my husband's emails and he didn't have time to print them. He's out of town for the rest of the week, um, which stated if we were, my husband sent him stating, you know, we were willing to talk to someone because we were called and asked if we want to negotiate. And my husband stated he was willing to hear what they have to say. When he did say to the email, which was Brett, basically that, yes, we would like to negotiate. That was all we heard for a while. So when we were told that Ilona, who was the other representative, was downstairs in the building, we went downstairs on Friday the 22nd and we spoke with her, which basically we stated that, you know, with the amount that is being asked, $405, um, right now we're paying 1945, dollars $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, which includes uh, storage. We were told the management will negotiate $50 from the asking price. And we stated basically, we cannot afford $350 a month. We are all coming out of a pandemic which is everyone has been through it. And we understand, yes, he has costs, but we have expenses too. And we just cannot afford to pay $350 a month. We ask if we can negotiate further, at least put it up $100 a month. We can pay that. We're not saying we don't want to pay the rent. We want to pay the rent, but we can't afford to pay you know, that 400 and whatever amount that they're asking. Basically, Alana said, you know, management has told her he's not willing to go any further. So we said, okay, well, we'll have to take a different route because we have only until the end of this month to decide what we need to do or what will happen. Um, and that's where we left it. Now, go back to when all of this started, um, I feel has a concerned tenant that if you're going to acquire a building, a complex with people, come and speak to your people. We are people. I understand, yes, you may be the investor, the buyer, but we are all here. We are the ones who were trying to keep in this place going in terms of a family, in terms of, um, you know, how a family will work. And we feel that we have a relationship with our previous owners. You know, yes, they're gone. And we were only looking to get feedback from those who we can get feedback from to understand, okay, where is this all going? What are your plans if you're asking for this amount of money to um, ha has an increase? There are other buildings in the area, they have much more amenities, which they're comparing themselves to, which is the brown, and they have much more amenities than we do. If I could afford, I will go to the brown too, because that's what a luxury apartment is. Our apartment, and we love it, has a washer and dryer, two bedrooms, one and a half bathroom, uh, I take that back, two full baths, um the patio and we do the best that we can with it before people live in here okay there's a community room on each floor which is like an extension to the um, apartment we try to utilize that to have friends and family over um there is parking that you can park anyway yes However, with all of that said, you want to be able to know that, you know, you are paying for something, which is like a mortgage. <laughs> Most of us who pay here is a mortgage. Um, you want to know that what you're paying here is appreciated. It doesn't have to be, but it makes you want to be, it makes you want to stay. It wants you want to be a happy tenant. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's kind of challenging and the wording I used was because of how I felt ludicrous that someone would ask that much from 
people who are in, uh, uh, well, you may not know the dire situations, but would expect that everyone would be on the same page, whether you're elderly, disabled, young, older, it doesn't matter. The expectation was the same for everyone. And I find that very unfair, very unfair. Yes, there are some of us that may be able to pay it. And then there are some of us who didn't care. They just left. They didn't care. And that's what's going on. There's an exit out of the apartments because people just don't want to deal with it. But I felt that we need to have a voice because whether I stay or I go, those that are left behind shouldn't have to feel the brunt of you know, what is going on within the complex. Um, I mean, there, there, there's much more that could be said in terms of, uh, uh, I, I feel that um, the comparison for the amount, like I said, the one place that is of a luxury apartment in the area, which is the Borden, I, I feel that if that's a comparison of how much they want us to pay to them, that's that's very unfair. That's unfair because they do offer a lot more than what this um, this complex offers. Those in the neighborhood who may be paying this amount that they're asking are homeowners. I expect that amount from a homeowner because they have much more space and you know, they can do what they want because it's their property. This is not our property. We're only of service to someone else. So I get that. So that's why I think that is unfair and very um, ludicrous that it would be asked of us to do that. Um, so that's what I can say as of right now. Okay. Uh, Diane, are you working again? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, there she is. It took a little bit of time. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, computers, computers. Computers, computers. <laughs> Technical difficulty. Um, you can either hear from Brett commission members or um, you could ask questions of Janice, whatever you want to do. Um, any co I'm going to defer to some of my commissioners here and see if they have some questions. Diane, is there a before... witness? Is there a witness? I have some witnesses, yes. I have Noreen, who is also uh, a tenant. She lives on the second floor. And I have Le Leanne, she's also a tenant. And um, they can explain themselves. They're one of those whose leases are expiring, are in the same predicament, or their lease has expired and has been told what, what they need to do. So I'll call upon um, Wait Leanne. a minute, the, the witnesses go after Brett. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Um, I think the question is, are there any questions for Janice? Mm. Diane, I have a quick question to you as chairman. Um, we had a couple other documents, I think, that were part of this discussion. Bonnie, is it too early to present those? I think there was something from the legislative commissioner's office reference guide, as well as some uh, a little bit of analysis that was done on the market in the region no i mean tony i don't know if i have them right here but you certainly could give an overview okay i think the legislative commissioner's office i don't have the hard copy in front of me i think the town attorney might have given us a little bit right, of a history keep, you keep talking and i'll find it it's the bullets that were um were brought in on the oversight for this uh advisory review in concert with some of the work that Diane did, I think it was that shared some of the rental changes and the increase in rents that happened, not only in Wethersfield, but also in Newington. So while you're looking for those, I guess we could, I, my suggestion is to continue and have a Noreen and, or having Brent representing manage, uh, give his side. Okay. And then I'll, um, I'll email everybody the info once I find it. Okay. Does that Thank work you. for the commission members? Sure. Well, if we go to our emails, will we get kicked off Zoom? Yeah. Um, no. uh, while Brett yeah. testifies, I'll get them out to you and then I can summarize it. Okay. Excellent. So, Brett, you want to raise your right hand, please? I got to find you. Where are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to make sure that hand's up. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, do you solemnly swear or sincerely affirm as the case may be that the evidence, <clears throat> sorry, you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God or upon penalty of perjury. Yes. All right. Okay, how are how is everybody today? Um, I kind of I wanted to start just before I got into the whole speech that we had prepared with a couple of things that uh, the last speaker said that we don't really agree with. Um, the initial complaint of thirty three to forty four percent increases. I'm not really sure where those numbers came up with. Um, this woman who just spoke got a twenty four percent increase. We were willing to negotiate all the way to twenty two hundred which is a 16% increase, which I think falls very well in what the market asked for in this region. Um, we've had a lot of difficulty getting hold of her and her husband, Carl. Um, we've knocked on the door, we've made calls, emails, the whole nine yards. I, I believe what was going on was kind of ignoring us until this uh, meeting probably took place, but that's neither here nor there. A couple other quick things um, from when she was speaking that I kind of took surprise to was the sale wasn't unannounced. We, we announced the sale on the very first day with letters introducing ourselves. You know, we can't send out letters to tenants before we own a property. If, you're, if your old ownership didn't tell you, I'm sorry, um, not really much we could do. Literally the first day that we owned the property, we sent out all of our info, our, our emergency numbers, how to contact us, the whole nine yards, just like we would with any other complex. Um, and then the emails that followed up, they weren't meant to be harassing. They were strictly trying to get all the tenants signed up to Buildium, which is our management software. Um, the nice thing and why we really pressed that at the beginning is because we can do bulk emails. You know, you can do, you can speak to everyone in the community. You can pay your rent. You can do work orders. Really, it's, it's just really important to the complex to be signed up for that program. It makes their lives easier, our lives a lot easier. Um, so it wasn't meant to be harassing. We were strictly just trying to kind of get everybody on the same page like we would with any tenant. It had nothing to do with increasing the rents. Those emails that were going out were strictly to get people onto Buildium. Um, a couple other quick things. The Borden, you referenced that a couple of times and, and I don't believe that our amenities are worse than the Bordens. I think we have much better amenities. You, you failed to mention that we have a swimming pool which they don't, the fitness rooms, the three community rooms with the pool tables, the cable, everything. Um, On-site staff, which we feel is a huge thing that they didn't have before at this complex, which we offer. We have someone nine to three, Monday through Friday in the office, in the lobby. So there are, we think we're more than comparable to that complex. Um, the rents actually at this complex, are in line with an apartment complex like Follybrook that's not too far away. And, and obviously this is a much higher class, higher level property than that property is. Um, so another thing I kind of disagree with. Um, with those things said, I'll kind of go into the beginning of this whole process. As, as it was mentioned in the complaint, um, and I'm sure all of you know, when you buy real estate, it's not necessarily purchased off of what the current rent roll is. Um, usually it's off of a performa, which, which we can look into the market analysis. We dove into it deeply before we purchased this complex, just as we would with any other complex. Um, this particular property, the rents are wildly undervalued for what the market is. Um, we understand that. We're not here to be at the very top of the market. We're okay if boarding gets a little more than us for now um, until we're kind of stabilized. And what we do as far as that goes is we don't, these renewals that went out and they went out 75 days before any of them were set to commence. So people had more than enough time. They could come down, speak to us anytime they wanted. They could call us, email us. We have a, a full-time office in Stanford, a full-time office in Weathersfield. Um, 24 hour line, there, there's many ways to get a hold of us. So with that said, what we did, like I said, 75 days in advance, we sent out um, renewals to anybody that had an expiring lease. We took the renewal prices and we basically split it right down the middle of what, we, what we're renting these apartments for if they go vacant and what the rents currently are. These were not huge jumps, like I said, between 16 and 24% jumps. Um, still hundreds and hundreds of dollars below 
what they rent for if they become vacant. And I can show you people that have moved in as early as last week that are paying these prices, $2,500 for a two bedroom, $2,300 for a one bedroom. So, so we're very still far below. And we do that because we just think it's the right thing to do. You offer people a chance to stay. Um, you kind of give them an option. They don't have to take it. We understand it is a big hike or it's still a hike. We think it's a reasonable hike, but we do understand any rent increase can be tough for people. Um, so we're willing to work with everybody kind of on an individual basis. Um, the things that we do as far as the leasing that we think is quite helpful is we offer super flexible leasing terms. Um, if someone wanted to go month to month, um, they can do that. If they want to do six months, three months, whatever it might be, whatever we can do to help. We also offer an addendum to our leases that has a no lease break fee. And the reason we do that is say someone two months into signing this lease renewal finds that they're just having a difficult time um, with the increase and they want to move on or they find a better opportunity, whatever it may be. As long as they give us 30 days notice, let us show the units. We'll let them out of their lease without any sort of lease break. We'll return their deposit as long as the rent's paid. Um, and as long as there's no damage to the apartment. So, so we offer a lot of different terms as far as that goes. We didn't offer, we didn't ask for any deposit increases with these. Um, normally if we rent to a new person, we're looking for at least one month's rent for a deposit. We didn't ask for any of that. We were able to keep the standard deposits there. Um, so yeah, we, we, we had more than enough ways to kind of work with people. The original leases that went out, they were $2,350 for the two bedrooms, two baths, and they were $2,200 for the one bedroom, one baths. Now, as people have reached out to us, which the majority of people have, we've already, we sent out 28, and we already have 16 of them signed. So we're working out deals with people. Um, and what I think people will find is when they call and they talk to us, you know, we're willing to hear everybody out, hear their situation, what their, what their issues might be, what their terms are. Um, we've gone as low as 1900 on some of the one bedrooms. If there's certain areas, like some of them don't have balconies, things like that. We've gone as low as 2200, um, for the, for the two bedrooms. And basically one thing we do ask for, or we really look for, we're willing to work with people if they have good payment history. We spoke with the past, uh, management. We were able to get kind of an idea of who paid and who didn't, um, the woman that just spoke, we're, we're still trying to track down. We're a month behind on rent. Um, so that obviously never came up in our discussions. We've had a hard time getting a hold of her. Um, but yeah, as far as if we're talking about good quality tenants who, who have a good payment history, we're definitely willing to talk to people. Um, some of the requests, obviously, you know, we are running a business here. We can't, we can't match rents of you know, what they have right now, we just, we won't be able to cover our bills. It's just business. It's, it's, it's nothing personal. Um, it's just sort of, it, it is what it is. The market, the market shows that we should be able to get the things that the rents that we're asking for quite easily. Um, and, and that's kind of our plan going forward to continue trying to, trying to get back to uh, market rent. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you live in the complex? No, I don't. I live in Wallingford. And is anything, I, I might've missed it, was heat yeah. and hot water, anything included at 275 Ridge Road? Cause I know Follybrook, it included their heat and hot water. Yeah, they, so we actually, we used to own Follybrook. So I know the Follybrook yeah. well, the complex is just, it's completely apples to oranges. It's not even I close. Um, I, we liked Follybrook for what it was, but this, let's be honest, this is a much higher end property. Um, we're much more in line with the board and, the prices we're asking are are not even close to what the board is getting. Um, hey, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know if that means they agree with me or not. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so what's the utilities, Brett? There's no utilities included here. None? Nope. Okay. Yep, just like the board. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood. Yeah, you. absolutely. The other thing too is we're we're trying our best to to really improve the complex. Um, we already have amenities at the board and in other places like this locally. They don't provide, like I said, the, the pool is a huge thing. Um, we're off of that busy main road. We're also doing things. We're in the works with putting together like an outdoor community room, which will have grills and picnic tables, that kind of thing for get-togethers, much like we have um, on the interior with the community rooms. 
Um, <laughs> we've added the on-site staff, which we think is huge to making any complex better. Previously, they, they had nobody in the office at any time. They had no uh, manager that was just for this property. So we're already in the short time that we've had the complex making improvements um, and, and kind of doing our best to, to keep people happy, keep people there if we can. Um, but ultimately, like I said, the numbers just have to add up. I don't, I don't think people always realize when they live in a complex, um, you know, it, it sounds heartless to say, but with the, with the market the way it is in this area, if people moved out and we rent these apartments, our bottom line goes up more than if they re-sign. We're, we're offering a great deal to people. And what we find in other complexes, after the initial shock of being upset with the rent increase, they go, they look for another apartment. They find that our offer is still a fantastic deal, far below what they're going to be able to get for what we offer, unless they kind of want to downgrade to a different place. And then they come back and they sign and we move forward happily together. So um, I suspect, judging from all the people that we've already worked out deals with out of this first group, um, and dealing with a lot of the tenants, you know, we're there on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I suspect that this will be no different. That's generally how it goes with these sort of things. Um, Brett, just for the minutes, sure. what's a one bedroom cost? Do you want the, the original lease renewal yeah. that we sent Two out? Two bedroom, I had 2350. What was the one bedroom? 2200. And like I said, it, as far as we've met with people, we've signed as low as 1900 for the ones if you have good payment history, certain such, you know, different leasing terms. Um, and we've gone as low as 2200 on the two bedrooms. Okay. Okay. Which, which if, if some of these, you know, I, I just spoke to Noreen the other day in the office and I was telling her it was a, you know, it's the extra, I, I can't go any lower than what we spoke about, Noreen. I know it wasn't exactly what you wanted to hear, but I was being honest. It's, it's far below still. Um, I'm sure you looked it up what you're going to be able to find in, in this range of property. Hi, Brett. Can hey. I ask one more question? Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Uh, the month to month, uh, if someone decides, I know you, you, you must charge more. No, see, that's the thing we, and that's, that's really a thing that we feel strongly about. Look, as I said, it sounds bad to say, but if people moved out, it doesn't, it helps us in the long run. You know, we're not trying to be heartless. We understand people want to stay. So we're not trying to push people out. But if we're speaking strictly from a financial aspect, our rent roll goes up if people move out and we rent it to market rent tenants. People don't want to hear that. So the last thing that we want to do is feel like we've trapped people and we've got them kind of stuck in a bad situation for them. So anytime we do anything like this with rent increases, especially at a new complex like this one is, we're we tell people right up front, we'll put an addendum in your lease, sign on for 12 months so that you have the certainty of that price that you're comfortable with for now. Two months into it, one month into it, if you say this just, it's not shaking out well for me, the bills don't add up, we'll lay you out of your lease completely, uh, no lease break fees, return your deposit. The one thing that we do ask with that um, is we like to once a week be able to kind of set aside a time where we can show the unit to prospective tenants. That's it. We want to just be able to go in there. We'll get it rented. We have a waiting list already. These, the market is crazy in this area. It's not, it's not difficult to find people willing to pay much more than these prices. Um, so that's why the last thing we want to feel like is we're holding tenants hostage. It's so far from the truth. You know, it's, it's the complete opposite, really. Anybody else in the commission have any questions? Tony, you want I me guess to I wanna... go ahead? Go ahead. Uh, Brett, I, if you could... I did email everybody, including Brett and um, Janice Sienfa from the town attorney. But I think what Tony was alluding to was, first of all, there's no rent control in Connecticut. So instead, right. they have these fair rent commissions. Right. And what the commission has to determine excessive rent, um, the, the criteria is rents for comparable <coughs> for comparable units, amount and frequency of rent increases, sanitary conditions, number of bathtub showers, toilets and sinks, services, functions, furnishings, bedroom size and number, repairs necessary to make the accommodations livable, amount of taxes and overhead expenses, including debt, 
compliance with state and local health and safety laws, renters' income and housing availability, utility availability, tenant damage to the premises other than ordinary wear, and the degree to which income from the rent increase will be reinvested in property improvements. Is that what you were alluding to, Tony? Exactly. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. It's very yep. detailed and important to put in the record. Yep. So that's what the state law allows these guys to only I, look at those things. I really think that after listening to what I just, uh, my speech there, you can see we touched on a lot of those items. Um, <laughs> a lot of those things are just sort of, you know, they're the right thing to do when you buy a complex. They, they go hand in hand, um, almost a common sense type of situation. So we, we've already discussed a lot of these things and, and we're more than willing to, um, you know, abide by those guidelines. Then the other thing Tony asked, which I sent to everybody, was Diane, today you sent out a market. Oh, um, yes, I did. Um, kind of yeah. of the area, a market study of what mark, uh, what rents are going for in the area. Yeah, yeah and uh, the, the only thing is, is like these complexes usually do not um, work with realtors. Usually, I mean, they do, but they have they have people like Brett who is busy having different they have different scouting areas that they go to to find their tenants so they don't necessarily put these things on the multiple listing service however we there are people that do and if and as you guys look you'll see that there are some for 275 Ridge Road so that means they have they have at times used a realtor uh, uh, that, that must have been just if I can just interject quickly that that must have been the previous um, ownership because potentially we, yeah yeah so just so you know um, if it helps too, anytime we you know buy a new property we obviously do our market research um, well in advance of this stuff we already have an idea of what we can charge for rent what other people are getting what the surrounding communities um, charge this all goes into our buying process so we feel very comfortable when we go in um, to a new area or a new, this area wasn't new to us. We're very familiar with the area, but a new complex, um, we want to feel 100% comfortable that what we're going to ask for is reasonable just in case it gets to meetings like this that we, you know, we have legs to stand on and feel comfortable with um, our procedures. So we can, we can divulge any of that information. We, we do extensive market research before we buy any complex. Are there any other questions for Brett? I want to thank Brett for being as transparent as he is. He seems to be th very thorough and very complete. Diane, I think your information with Newington comparing Weathersfield, I'm grateful for that information. I just want to note that I believe Newington might be a different marketplace with over 23 to 2,500 units versus Weathersfield and the board and some of the compliments yeah. that Weathersfield has offer not to insult Newington in any way or form, but it might be a little bit marketplace. And I'd, I'd like to see if, if Noreen's available for testimony and being as transparent as Brent is. And I'm grateful that he's looking at mm -hmm. no getting that two bedroom unit to 2,200 a month and interested. Hey, Brett, is that a one year lease extension? Yeah, so, well, oh, so sorry to cut you off. I appreciate uh, you know what you said. And yeah, we always, we sort of always look to go into a 12 month lease and that's not really for us. It, we find that it makes the tenants sort of feel more confident um, when you're, you have, you're locked into a price. So that we find sometimes we offer short-term leasing, we're fine with it, but we find sometimes that tenants, they feel a little uneasy with it. They're worried that in six months, you know, we might be going through a similar process, which nobody wants to do. So um, yeah, we're, we're super flexible with the leasing. It, it honestly, it doesn't matter to us. We, we do month to month, we do um, 12 months, six months, three months, whatever it is, the lease breaking option, we're, we're very flexible when it comes to leasing terms. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's not necessarily about the lease or trapping people, like I said, for 12 months, we're strictly just need to get this rent roll up so that we can cover the taxes and the mortgage on the property. And you only, you only have 12 left out of 28 to settle up with, is that correct? There's 64 units um, in total. Now, not all of them, some of them had expiring leases that went into later parts of the year. So what we always like to do is we like to send out the lease renewals 
um, around three months in advance just to give people ample time. Um, with the purchase, this one went a little bit into March. So we were right around 75 days for this one. So it was a little shorter than what we normally do. But yeah, so we sent out 28. We've already signed up with, hold on here. That's 16. 16 of them. Um, so, and, and I tell you, as I kind of alluded to before, in the last week, you know, are probably 10 to 12 of those. What always happens is, this isn't our first time doing this. Um, so we've kind of gotten into a routine on, on how these things normally go. People usually get shocked. Um, they get mad. They call people like these commissions to, to look at the cases. Um, then in a month, they, they kind of do some searching around. They see that it's still a fantastic deal what we're offering and that they don't really have much of a leg to stand on as far as fair rent commissions in Connecticut. Um, and then we end up signing a lease with them towards when their renewals are, are coming due. People just human nature, they're going to wait right till the end, see if a better deal comes up, which we're fine with. It's, it's no problem to us. It doesn't matter. Um, but we, we always sort of find that as the, as the date gets closer and closer, and on these renewals, it's uh, June 1st for the majority of them, um, you know, we start to really click them off quickly when, when that date approaches. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, question. Yeah. I've never had a lease because I haven't rented in years, but at the end of a lease, like at the end of next year's lease, do you automatically go up? No, so we don't have any sort of prices. I mean, I don't, I don't know how this works. I mean, yeah. do they ever, or let's put it this way, does it ever stay the same? Absolutely. Does it ever stay the same? Absolutely. There's no, we don't have any necessarily um, planned increases for, you know, for 12 months from now. I honestly don't know. We'll see where the, we always kind of just sort of keep an eye on where the market is. I would tell you if you're not in a lease, you really should look to get into one. It kind of protects you. It gives you a little bit of stability for where you are. Um, but yeah, it's, there's no sort of set um, schedule of increase or anything like that. Um, our thing is we just like to give people about 30, um, about three months in advance if there is gonna be any sort of increase. Obviously, when you buy a new complex like this, you know, after 12 months, if someone signed on this group, you're not gonna see a rent hike as much as this one the next time. It would, if there was a rental increase, it would be much, much less. This is strictly to get an undervalued property towards market rent. We're not looking to, you know, in 12 months now push it way above the market rent. That's not fair to do. Um, so yeah, so so I I wouldn't I wouldn't suspect that there would be um, you know anything even close to these numbers on the next renewal. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I have a question. Sure. Um so here on so on the list of things that we can consider as a commission. One of the things is the renter's income and housing availability. Yeah. And I just have some questions because what I'm hearing is that you feel very confident that when you are raising the rent for folks whose leases are ending, that they will not be able to find another place to live. And I know that Janice, you said you have children. Um, yeah to be able to keep them in the school district that they're in and their schools with their friends um, and be a continued member of the community. And then eventually they will give up on looking for somewhere that they can actually afford and agree to the That's terms of the lease with an increase. And I'm just wondering, I guess this is maybe is, maybe is a, a question for the commission in general, but where does the where do you feel that your responsibility lies in keeping people invested in a community right, where they've right. lived for a while? Sure. Yeah, and if I could take that, I just if it came off that way, that's not how I meant it at all. Um, the way I the way I was kind of saying it is that we feel that the prices that we put forward, people will actually find that it's a fantastic deal for what they're getting, the market they're in. Um, I, I didn't, if it came off the way that you took it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to come off that way at all. The way I was trying to portray it is, I think people get surprised at first with any rental increase, no matter what the price is. And when they look around, they start to realize, oh, these guys, you know, they didn't just make these numbers up. This is a fantastic price. So um, it's a great deal for what I have. It's, it's fantastic amenities. It's a new construction property. There's on-site people. It's a great company. There's all these sort of different things that we ultimately find 
they end up realizing that they have a really nice deal and we end up working out an agreement. I didn't mean it as to they, they can't go anywhere, you know? Um, so if it came off that way, I didn't mean it to. Um, there's, more than, there's more than enough housing. The other thing that we do to kind of combat that is you only have to give a, a month's notice on these. There's two things we could do. We could come into these complexes, particularly this one, and if we were um, kind of trying to take the path of what you just said is we could send non-renewals. Like the, we don't have to offer people lease renewals. We can, we send them out to try to give people an offer far below market rent and far below what we're going to rent them for because we understand it's tough to move. Not everybody wants to move. If they want to stay, they have the option to. Um, so that's kind of the first thing. If we were heartless people, we'd come in and we'd say, here's 28 non-renewals pack your things by the end of this month and we'll, we have a waiting list of people that'll pay the boarding prices for it. That's not what we're looking to do at all. We're, you know, that's not the right thing to do morally. We don't think that's the right thing to do. It's well within our legal um, rights to do, but that's not what we do at all. Um, the other thing, we go far and beyond the amount of time we have to give people to figure it out. So I think to say that you know, nearly three months of advance notice where someone couldn't find an, another rental or a place to go. I mean, how much more time really can you give people? It's, it's ample, ample amount of time to figure these sort of things out and kind of figure out a backup plan if it's not gonna work or if we can't come to an agreement or if you just don't like our company, whatever the situation might be. We, we kind of try to, on the front end, we sort of try to take care of these things with giving the extra time, the extra flexibility. Um, so yeah, the, it's, if it, I don't, I, I'm sorry it came out that way, but that's not how I meant it when I was talking before about um, you know people coming back and signing on with us. And I have a a, a follow up question sure. just for clarity. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So when if someone would tell you, hey, I really my family really cannot afford this amount of rent that we are that you proposed, right. um, we are going to plan to move, but we need to find another place. Can we have a few months? Is yeah. the rent that they're paying during those few months the rent that they had been paying with their previous lease? Or are they right. paying the new increase price? So, so that's that's kind of where it comes into play with this. Um, you know, these things went out mid March. So if someone came to me mid March and they said, you know, I can't afford this. It just it's not going to work for me. No hard feelings. It is what it is. We have to move on. Their rent is going to. Most of these people were already on an expired lease when we bought the complex, or their lease is expired April first or May first. We kick it all the way out to June until anything will go up for everybody that we send them to. So we don't mind taking the lower rent for you know the rest of March, April, May. By June 1st, we think it's a reasonable time frame to say, look, now the rents have to go up to what we offered. If you're gonna stay, we can put out a month to month lease. If not really, you've had ample time to sort of figure out another plan. Um, obviously each case is different, but that's sort of um, standard protocol as far as that goes. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Are we going on to the witness? I'd like to hear the witnesses. Okay, Noreen, we'll start with you. Okay. All right, Noreen, you gotta raise the hand. Mm -hmm. um, and do you solemnly swear and sincerely affirm as, as the case may be that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God or upon penalty of perjury. Yes, I will. Thank you, Noreen. Welcome. Um, I'm coming from the senior citizen point of view. Um, I'm 68, going to be 69 in a few weeks. And um, I believe I explained this to Brett that, well, first of all, I'm not on Medicare. I don't have Medicare, so my um, monthly... Um, amount does not go up like it has been for the past few months from some Medicare people. My, um, oops, I lost you guys. Just click down at the bottom. Yeah, this one? Click down there. Oh, we can wow. hear you. Okay, okay. sorry, I, I got that. Yeah, here okay. I am. Um, I am on a fixed income, fixed monthly income. So whatever amount is asked of me, I have to take away from something else. Um, 
and this may not apply or whatever, but a year ago, I was in a horrible car accident in which my car was totaled. Uh, luckily walked away. There were two people that hit me and it was just horrible. But anyway, so I had to purchase a new vehicle. And so now I am also um, responsible for the next six years of uh, car payments, which I did not anticipate. Um, I have only been here, it will only be a year in July. And I love this place very much. Uh, I come from a situation where um, the accommodations were not suitable for me as I have some disability issues. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, when I found out that this facility had an elevator, uh, washer and dryer, um, shower, walk-in shower in every unit, that's just, that just <laughs> sealed the deal for me. Um, the only thing is it's a long haul, hallway to my apartment, but that's okay. Um, so I expect this to be my permanent home. That's how much I love it here. Um, I love the community. I love obviously where it's located, its accessibility. Uh, my doctors are all up here. And um, my, my sister lives a minute and a half away and we're very close, <clears throat> excuse me. So that just, again, seals the deal. Um, I did talk to Brett about the rent increase and he did come down another $50, but <laughs> again, being on a fixed income um, with no other part-time job or anything, because I cannot walk or stand for any amount of time, I have to have assistance or a walker, which I'm very sad about. Um, because I thought my retirement years would be wonderful and I could walk and walk and walk and visit and visit. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So when this property came up, um, I went to see it and I had only seen one other property. And this one was hands and hands above the other property. I mean, it was just like, to be honest with you, I couldn't afford this property when I came. But Oh, I have goosebumps, um, but I wanted it because it was just so accommodating and I liked the circumstances. Um, so I would hope that being a senior and speaking for other seniors in the complex, uh, I know of a couple of people who went away crying about it because they couldn't afford the increase. I know a number of people who have moved way out of state because uh, they couldn't afford it either. I knew young families who have moved out because they couldn't afford it, even though maybe two people are working. Um, it's gonna only end up to be an exclusive place for um, the up, up and coming young people who are making you know, heads and tails above all of us. And so I really am concerned about the seniors and again, what's going to happen next year as far as a rent increase? If you say, okay, you're going to stick to whatever it is now, am I going to have to look forward to another $200 or more? Um, I, I just don't think it fair. I don't think it fair. Um, again, I, it's just so perfect for me here. Um, it's not a large space inside. And I, I really appreciate that. And it's just a very quiet and, and friendly neighborhood in the complex, I should say. So um, again, I'm speaking for people like me who may not be able to afford it again. Thank you. Can I just take a second to respond to some of that? Before you, the commission members go first. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Noreen, for the record, could you tell us what unit number you're in? Yes, I'm in 207. 207, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I'll go. I'll ask a question. It's um, uh, Diane McAdams, the chair. So, Brett, I have a, a, a am I asking Noreen? I guess Noreen I goes first. Then, once you're finished with, okay, I don't it's almost like you go from one side to the yeah, other. Yeah. I don't have any questions for Noreen. I understand where she's coming <clears> from. <throat> so, now you okay. can go back to Brett for his response. Oh, all right. So wait a minute. Does Tony have another question for Noreen? Yeah. Noreen, is, is your unit a one bedroom unit? I think she's frozen. Uh, she's in a two bedroom, two bath. Two bedroom, two bath? Yeah. And could you tell me what um, you've offered her, Brett? On, yeah. On, uh... This is kind of what I was, um, this is what I wanted to respond. So I met um, Noreen and I, the person, her, her uh, I don't know their situation, but the person she lives with, um, I met because I was in the office working the other day, uh, last week on the 21st, um, or sorry, the week before. Um, she said that we offered her $50 off of the $2350. That's not mentioning that we had already offered her 100 off of that before that. So we said, okay, we already offered you down to $2250. I understand you're in a, she, she had a similar conversation to what she just said to you guys. I said, okay, I understand. Um, I can get you another $50 off. Honestly, I can't, my bosses aren't going to be happy with me. It's, it's really the best I can do. So it wasn't $50 we came off. It was $150 down to $2,200, which is 16% increase. Um, I, I explained to her everything I explained to you guys. You know, we're not, we're more than willing to keep her there. Um, we want to try to work something out if we can. I also didn't think it was right to sort of lead her along. I let her know that $2,200, honestly, I, I'm not going to be able to get that approved from my bosses to go any lower than that. That's going to be the best we can do. Wait, sorry, Brett. I, I lost you for about five minutes. So could you please repeat what yeah. you said? We're trying to get her back on camera, but I'm her sister. Yeah, she had to go out and come back in. I'm sorry. And it's did it again. Oh, okay. No, I'm in. He's live. Okay. So, okay. You know, just tell me where you guys want me to start. I don't know. I don't know who's um, being here. A question. God, I don't know what's the matter with my voice today. You want me just to start <laughs> the right question, there? Noreen, is, what was already answered. Uh, Commissioner Homicki was wondering um, what size bedroom you have and what did Brett offer for rent? So Brett was just talking about what he offered to you. All right. Well, still- I can go through it again if you'd like. It's not a big deal. Sure. Is, would, is that what you guys want me to do, Bonnie? I think Noreen should just hear what you said. That's all. Sure. Yeah. So Noreen, basically I was just going over the meeting that we had um, in person the other day at the office. Mm -hmm. I was explaining that I met with um, you and the person that you live with. Um, you had mentioned that we offered $50 off the rent that failed to acknowledge that we had already come off the rental price from the original lease renewal by a hundred dollars. So ultimately it was $150 off of the original offer. Um, that brought it down to 2,200. Um, that's a 16% increase, which we think is more than fair for this market. Um, I, I even went as far with hearing out your situation, how much do you like the apartment? You had told me that there were some issues in the apartment. Um, we, we went through that whole list together, some things like your toilet seat you weren't happy with, some things with your shower. I sent someone the next day to fix all these things for you. Um, we, I, I was explaining to the rest of the commission too that when I told you about the $2,200, I was very upfront. I'm not trying to lead you on. I, I really can't get any lower than that. Um, that's gonna be the best offer we can have for those size apartments. Um, so uh, to me, we've, we've really tried to go above and beyond to accommodate you the best we can. We'd love to keep you. It seemed like you, know, you had good payment history from the last landlord. So we took that into account when we took the extra 50 on top of the 100 off of the price. That's why we were able to get all the way to 2200. So um, at this point, I, I really honestly feel like we've, we've done, we've kind of gone above and beyond to try to keep you and, and keep you there if, if we can. Well, I have excellent payment history, actually. Yeah. I mean, I've never that's been like, yeah. Um, and, then, and look, we're, and just on a personal level, we met, you, right. you know, I don't, it seemed like we had a good conversation. I'm actually surprised to see you here today. I thought we okay, had wait, a good wait, 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 you can't go back and forth like oh, this. Oh, sorry, sorry. So if Brett's done, uh, Madam Chair, you can have Noreen respond if you so care to, and then it can go back to Brett. Sorry about that. 
Um, Noreen, did you? Yes. Uh, yes. I, had a, I had a question. So there's two. So Noreen, you have a, someone that lives with you? Yes. There's two people. And, and do they, I mean, are, are you the sole breadwinner? Or are they? Yes. 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 Okay, so they're not giving you any money towards rent. Right. Correct. Um, can I ask Brett a question? No, you can go ahead, Diane. Okay, so I do have a question. So a little sure. bit about, uh, like I've been following a little bit what's going on downtown Hartford. And don't everybody big do a big frown because they're doing a lot of great stuff downtown. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of rentals. There's a lot of things happening. But yeah. one thing I do know, like I know people who live at 777 and mm -hmm. I know people who live Hartford. over there by the, uh, our, the campus, mm -hmm. um, they do, I do know for a fact, and do you guys do this? This is my question. They do have, um, I don't know how to explain it. They do have a certain amount of people uh, uh, that maybe have lower amounts of income and a fixed budget that they do have in their complexes, such as maybe for seniors or um, people with lower income. Are you guys planning on doing anything like that for seniors and that sort of thing? Because let's face it, they don't really have a big income. And they're- Yeah, they do. Okay. yeah I, I totally know what you're saying. I think what you're speaking about is more project-based um, which is a little bit of a different scenario, but nonetheless, that's why we're willing to work with people like in Noreen's situation. We're not steadfast on that 2350 offer. Um, we're willing to come off it, like I said, this particular case because of her situation, we lowered it $100, then we lowered it another 50 for people, like you said, seniors, um, good payment history. So we try, we try to have a little bit of wiggle room on these sort of things where you know, we're not saying 23 or nothing. You got to get out. We're, right. We've come off. The, that's a that's a big amount to come off of an increase. 16%. Um, I mean, that's not that's not a big increase for this market. It's not a large increase at all. Um, and and like I said, that that number that we came off um, the first woman that spoke, uh, Jana, she never got that offer because we never spoke to her in person. You know, we weren't able to get a hold of her to kind of offer these things up. Uh, we've been being ignored. And, and then, like I said, with the issues with the payment history on that account, it's just, that's a little bit of a different situation with Noreen's situation. She came, spoke to us in person. She spoke to my property manager. Um, so I was able to get the reduced price um, approved for her. Same thing we offered with everybody else. I told her, you know, all of the lease options that we have, whatever we can do to kind of make her feel more at home and, and kind of put her mind at ease. Um, yeah, so we're, we're definitely willing to work with people on an individual basis and people like Noreen, senior citizens, um, fixed income, whatever the situation might be, we're willing to hear it. And I think this particular case is, it really proves that, you know, it's not just hearsay or talk that we're saying, this is a legitimate offer that we have on the table that I thought was already going to be signed, um, to be honest with you. So this is not just, uh, you know, me blowing smoke. These are real numbers that we've offered to people like Nor Noreen. Um, the lease, she has the lease. She's, is, she signs it. It's, it's, it's good to go, you know? So these are, these are real offers we have. We're, we're willing to work with people, um, who are in situations like Noreen's. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? I guess it goes to Noreen back to Brett. Um, I did speak to him. It's obvious. I did speak to him and I asked him to reduce it another 50. I did, but, but he, yeah, but he, he said it wasn't possible, so. That, that's, yeah. <clears throat> I, think, I, speak to that? I think there's one more witness. Yes. Secret witness. Leanne, did you want to say something? Yes. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We got to do our little raise your right hand bit. Uh, right. Do you solemnly swear and sincerely affirm as the case may be that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God, or upon penalty of perjury. So help me, God, I do. All right, give me your last name again. I'm sorry, Leanne. It's Cancel Callejas. C-A-S-T-L-E. It's C-A-N-C-E-L, and then the, the, the last one is C-A-L-L-E-J-A-S. 
Okay, thank you. Sorry. No, oh, no problem. Is this a is this a current tenant? Can I get the unit number? If I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing everybody. It is. I haven't had the opportunity to talk to you, Brett. Oh, sure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so my name is Leanne Cancel. I live in 201. 201. Perfect. Thank you. I have been in conversations with Ilona. She's she's great, right? She's doing a good job. Very nice lady. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? So should I should I begin? Sorry. Yes. Okay. So um my case may be a little different. I was in the middle of con of lease renewal while the building was sold. I actually have a lease expired since March 1st. I, I, I contacted uh, through Ilona trying to get um, somebody to talk to. Um, I have never gotten a response and then I finally got a lease. My rent, when you consider percentages, is a 31% increase going from 1795 to 2350 with no previous notice. Again, I was in the middle of negotiating the new lease when it was sold. What's the new amount? 2350. Thank same, you. Same as the rest. Okay, Can go I ahead. Continue? Sorry. So it, it is indeed a 31% increase. Again, while my lease was I was working on it and, and it expired. Um, I have tried, again, like, like I stated, I haven't had direct contact with Brett. I've asked numerous times to get in contact with Brett and have not been able to. Um, got the lease, knock on my door, got a lease, this is it. And uh, you have till May, till June 1st, first when it's gonna start. Um, I haven't had a response. I have, I've never been late on my payments and I'm, I've been waiting on something to negotiate. I understand that the market has gone up, but a 31% increase is not fair. Um, a couple of things too is when we talk about comparables, we've had issues with waste collection. We've had uh, garbage uh, overload. We still have debris on the on the property near the garbage area. We have a broken intercom. We have um, defective equipment in the gym. So while I understand that there's amenities, I don't think anybody's bringing the issue that maintenance right now is a problem. Um, also, when you talk about comparable, the board has a concierge there. It has a golf simulator. It's it's in walking distance to food, shopping. We're not in walking distance to anywhere. And like I stated, we have, at least in my case, I, have, I haven't been given enough time or even somebody to talk to to come to an agreement, even if I have to move. So the, the idea, and I, I don't wanna generalize that everybody's been handled the same way, it hasn't been my experience. Um, I am, Actually, we're in May. I'm still paying to be up from the $17.95, but I can't afford $23.50. I'm looking to move, but I can't pay that high amount in this short time frame. And considering that my lease lapsed, I was left quite unprotected um, and never got a response as far as you know what happened there. I can tell you that I was given assurance that I was gonna be treated fairly. And again, fairly is a loose term that it, it's for you guys to determine what that is. I, I don't know what that is because I'm not a lawyer, I'm just an engineer. But um, I cannot, uh, uh, like right now I'm, I'm in a different situation maybe, but indeed for me, it was a 31% increase from one moment to the next without any wiggle room. And I talked to Ilona and she said, they're not gonna go anything over a $50 um, reduction, and then if you want to stay month to month while you find something else, there's no, no, um, um, no, no, um, you know, reduction. You have to pay twenty three fifty, and that I can't. I, if I could, I would. So what I'm trying to say is that while um, I'm open to talking, I haven't received that feedback 
some of the examples that are put to explain market value um, not necessarily apply to this place if you understood the you know the condition of the place as of today. Um, and I as well feel that a 31% increase is not only crippling to me, but it is unfair and I don't know what to do right now. And, and one last thing I will say, I've always used this place as the showroom for this building. Previous owners would contact me every week to bring people in. So I've always been a model tenant, um, never had an issue or anything. Um, I did get a response once the building was sold that from the previous owner to let them know if I was being like the race wasn't too big. I did not get a response back. Um, and I have, if you need that message, I have it and everything. And I do have a voicemail stating, you know, that we weren't going to be negotiating um, a, a, a lease renewal when the whole building got sold. And I, I got left sort of in that limbo. Thank you. Uh, does anybody in the commission have any questions for her? I, I don't. Lynn, Lynn, are you also a two-bedroom unit, Lynn? This is Tony. Correct, Tony. I am. Okay. I want to thank you and Janice and Noreen for testifying today. It's a little bit of pressure and a lot of fatigue, I'm sure, with all three of you anyway. So thank you very much for uh, giving us the detail and, again, being as transparent as you are with Brett. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. You just click on the button. Can I, can I respond to um, that or? Uh, yes, you can respond. Just, just quickly. Um, I've never met this woman in person, but uh, we're we're definitely. I'm looking at over the notes that we have. We have very detailed notes of every conversation um, we have with these lease renewals. It looks like she had planned to move out on 425. We've obviously let her stay past that. We've had trouble negotiating a new price. Um, your past landlord did mention. Um, that you let him use the apartment. So I know what you're talking about, definitely. He said you had good payment history. So we can definitely go down to the 2200 for you as well. You would qualify. Um, that would put you at a 21% increase, um, which I, again, I think is more than fair. Um, this is another situation, as I was saying before, it kind of shows that um, the things we're saying are very accurate. This lease was expired when we took the property over. We didn't look to push anyone out. It's now been you know, two months since then. Um, we're still giving her the lower rent all the way until June 1st to make a decision. We've kind of been getting strung along in this. First, we were told she was going to move. Now it sounds like maybe she wants to um, negotiate, which if you do, a loan will be there tomorrow. Go down, sign a lease at 2200. We're more than happy to keep you. Hopefully, hopefully that um, reduction in price can alleviate some of your concerns. Um, and then I just quickly wanted to touch on the uh, waste collection issue that you had mentioned um, when we transferred over the property the company Windsor Sanitation they were picking up only one of the dumpsters instead of the recycling as well there's two dumpsters there so the recycling bin um, which is it, it's an enclosed dumpster in the parking lot fenced in area they were only picking up one of the dumpsters they missed one of the pickups for a week we got it straightened out the next week we we weren't honestly sure why they missed it. it. Looks like it was just kind of a mix up on their part um, during the transition. So that's been taken care of. The call box, we had a problem with the first week that we took the property over. Um, they came out, they already fixed it once. We've paid for that repair. Just the other day, we had a similar issue. We troubleshooted it. We got a quote today. Actually, I spoke to the guy earlier today um, about just replacing the unit because rather than having these sort of ongoing issues um, with new complexes, there's sometimes going to be speed bumps like that kind of hiccups um, when you're transitioning between vendors and you don't necessarily know um, things like this that from if I had to guess I'd say this call box probably has been a problem for quite some time obviously we didn't own the complex we're just finding out about it so we're uh, we're more than happy to fix it and get any of your other concerns taken care of um, if you have work orders, whatever it is put it in with Alona we have Christian who's there every day to do the work orders the maintenance whatever you need um, we're here to help you. If you, if you do want to stay in 2200 sounds more feasible for you, please go down there tomorrow alone is there every day. 
Yeah. You don't necessarily have to speak to me directly. Alona works for me. She's a representative of me. She's going to tell you the same stuff and, and she'll, she'll get you taken care of if you, if you do want to stay at that reduced price. Can I, can I clarify? Because there was a misstatement there. Sure. Um, I never, uh, like I said, I was in the middle of extending my contract. I have never communicated to anybody that I was leaving on 425. That is inaccurate. With Alona? With nobody. I never said that I was leaving. I said that I wanted to talk to you. I, and I don't want to, because this is a hearing. This is not right, a, right. a conversation. I just want to clarify that that conversation did not take place. I never uh, said anything regarding me leaving at any time. I, I always stated that I wanted to talk to the building manager because she was telling me that she, you know, she was just relay, relay, relay messaging. Um, referring what she was getting from you. So right. I asked her, like, I want to talk directly to, to Brett. I'm a reasonable human being. I understand that there's a market hike. Never have gotten a response. Um, other um, thing that, like, those notes, I, again, I don't know the accuracy. I don't know where they were taken, but they're not m what I have gone through. Um, the other thing is I was I can show messages that I was in negotiations to get that to get renewed while the building was sold. I'm not saying that's anybody's fault within your um, within your organization. What I'm saying is I had no communication. And then while I tried to communicate to you guys that my lease had lapsed, the only thing I got was the same day as everybody, a letter stating you have till this time. Um, this is the increase and I haven't gotten a response back. Um, that's it. The other stuff, I stand by everything I said. And while I understand there's a market increase, there is not that much places to go to. So by effectively saying, this is all the time you have. If I go out there to find, I can't find anything in that time frame right now. And I'm working hard to find a place to move. So my, my conversation may be a, di a bit different, but I'm finding myself trapped in a situation where I can't leave before June. I can't pay that. And I, I didn't get a fair shot to talk to anybody to explain the situation. So every person is different. I'm just explaining my circumstances. Can I say anything? I'd like to respond to that as well. Oh, wait, 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 hold. Um, Madam Chair, you're supposed to go back and forth, back and forth. Right. Um, but we cannot get into a huge debate here about. I'll be quick. No, no, wait. I'm okay, just sorry. trying to get control out of this sorry. because these guys are all volunteers. We got one on a major vacation who's <laughs> given up his time for this. So, Madam Chair, I would go and have one person speak, and then you can decide whether to close the hearing. Okay, um, Brett, do you want, I guess you wanted to respond. Yeah, I, just quickly, I, I won't waste everyone's time, but just, I understand what she's saying. Obviously she's had some communication. She knows Alona. She's been working with the person, the property manager who's in the office every day. I have well-written notes. Um, she brought it up before we brought it up that she's been speaking to Alona. Um, so whatever, it's just, he said, she said, but the other thing I just want to quickly mention is to make the the uh, accusation that we're not giving enough time, it's just it's just simply not true. Um, this is well over two months to make a decision on this kind of thing. Um, it's it's not like we we slammed this on the door and said you know thirty days make up your mind. This is an expired lease. We haven't had an, a lease with you since March, March first. We've given you all the way till June first to figure it out. So I think you'll find um, with a lot of other real estate companies that's that's a lot more than you would have gotten a lot of, with a lot of other people. So, um, so we're still here too. And like I said before, if you do want to, you know, we can go directly if you don't want to deal with Alona or if you're not getting the answers you want from her, we can speak directly and, and hopefully we can work something out to keep you. All right. Is there any other questions before we close the hearing? Just to clarify one question for Brett of the 64 unit, Brett, if I walked in today and asked to rent, you're telling me that you would be offering it to me at twenty five hundred a month. Is that correct? Twenty five hundred for the twos, twenty three for the ones. Okay. And that's with application fees, deposits, the uh, the whole nine yards. There's, there's more fees. We're not asking for higher deposits from the people that are there. 
not asking for any of these extra fees. So, um, and, and even that, even that is far below market rent for this area. So we're still even to the new people below what we could be. For these three applicants, you're still willing to negotiate that 2,200 a month with, with a one-year lease? Absolutely. The only one, the first woman that spoke, um, Carl Richardson, we've had, we've had an issue with the March payment. So it's a little bit of a different situation. We're, we're still waiting on that money. So um, I don't know if I'd be as inclined to get into that sort of situation. And we've had trouble communicating with her directly. So um, that would be the only one I can't say definitely. But as far as Noreen um, and uh, the, the woman from 201, sorry, I forgot the name. We would definitely be willing to, uh, to continue negotiations. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman. I think uh, Janice Williams wanted to say one more thing. She did open the hearing and I thought we should give her a little more courtesy. Certainly. Janice? Thank you, thank you so much. I want to address um, what uh, Brett just said um, in reference to our payment. Our payments are on time, Brent. I want to say that clearly. We are just like the other two tenants. We are very good on our payment. We sent our payment via our bank, like we've been doing. We didn't go through the building app like you asked. So we sent that via a check. That was clear with Alona. So I was hoping she would have put that in the notes. So we didn't use the buildium, as you had said. We sent it directly to Avenue L um, through our bank. So we don't have an issue with paying our rent. So I wanted to clarify that before the board and um, to you directly, because- We, we haven't Monday. gotten the rent for March though. I'll just tell you, I, I'm okay. looking at the ledger. Okay, I will clarify. So, but, but to, just so you know though, if you can get that verified and maybe it went to the wrong place, we'd be more than willing to speak with you as well. If there was a mix up in, sometimes there can be mix ups with uh, the transitions. If you paid and you want to negotiate and you, you know, we found that you had made the payment to another address, we're more than willing to speak with you. Maybe we can come to an agreement as well. Sure. All right, can I get a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Motion to close. Second. No, so you want to speak. Is there room for discussion? <laughs> no, uh, the testimony is over, the hearing is okay. over. So what happens now though? That's Wait a minute, I need a vote to, okay. cl to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm. Okay. So okay. now there's a number of things that the commission, and right now the only ones who can speak is the commission. So everybody can stay on if you wish to. You don't have to get off or anything like that of whether they want to, you know, kind of take everything in, read everything, try to convene at another time um, very quickly to try to decide what they wish to do here. We would notify everybody of that date and time that they would reconvene or whether they wish to make a decision now. Um, one thing, and I've told Brett this, is during the time um, that Janice had filed the fair rent um, letter that her rent cannot be um, increased until there's a decision by the commission. And he is aware of that, he knows that. Um, so that's, it's up to the commission to kind of decide what direction they want to go in. Um, one thing I wanted to mention though, I just saw this in the um, information the town attorney sent out. Let me just find it here, which is why I, you know, well, let me read it first. The law specifically prohibits landlords from demanding an increase in rent within six months after a tenant files a complaint with a fair rent commission unless there's two exceptions the tenant's complaint regarding an issue was caused by lack of due care from the tenant which isn't the case here or the landlord experiences a substantial increase in property taxes maintenance costs operating costs not associated with the tenant's complaint um, at least four months prior to requesting a rent increase we filed these before, though. We so, had offered these before. I don't know. If that, wait, Brett. No, you're, oh, sorry, you sorry. cannot talk anymore. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll mute <laughs> so myself. Sorry. It's up to the commission to decide whether you want to kind of absorb all this, ask if you want more information, um, or whether you want to make a decision tonight. That's up to you guys. 
All right, Commission, do you have an idea what you want to do? Diane, I, again, I'm, I'm back to where you presented some data about the market rents. I think if I was walking in today at 2,500 a month, that's a reality check. Some of the details can, can confirm that. I'm intrigued that uh, all three, Janice, Noreen, and Lynn, are receptive to negotiating and um, bringing this. Either there was some miscommunication or not miscommunication, but they're, all three are are in the middle of negotiations, it's at least my perception. I'd like to consider reconvening in a week and see if, if the owners can give us some brilliant moments. I think the transparency of, the, of all parties has been very clear. I think we're all aware of that. I think uh, uh, Lindsay nailed it when she talked about the income issues with the tenants and where the, our statutory responsibility comes into play. That was put on the table. Um, I, th I think having two people living in a two uh, bedroom unit is, is a significant issue. And uh, I would hope within a week uh, uh, we could all get together again and uh, maybe not have another hearing and hopefully some negotiations could come into play. Mark the rents at 2,500. I don't think it's unreasonable. I think the former owner at those rents as low as 1795 was uh, fairly generous. I'm on the Planning and Zoning Commission. We did not impose an 830G <laughs> regulation me. for an income restrictive housing units. Market rents are what they are. They and it's are a very, what they are. Yeah, it's an uncomfortable situation for the tenants, but it's, I just feel there's a lot of transparency here and a lot of possible negotiations in the next week. I agree. Sue and Lindsay, what are you thinking? I'm happy to come back in a week. Pardon? I'm happy for oh great to get the room you. to negotiate. Sure you're okay with that. So what are we doing a week? We have another commission meeting or yep, that's yeah. what Tony's suggesting. He's suggesting that's just that. with the commission or with everybody else too. Everybody, I can I mean it's a public meeting, so I oh, could okay. let everybody oh, right. know, but they cannot talk anymore other than answer questions of the commission. But I guess what I would recommend if I'm hearing Tony right is each of you go and talk to Brett, nobody else, talk to Brett, um, and come up with the bottom line offer of what Brett can do for negotiations. And then- um, Each of the tenants? Pardon? Yes. Each, of, each of the tenants, okay. She's yep. talking about the tenants. And uh, then either you gotta let me know ahead of time or you report back here whenever the new date and time is for the commission to uh, reconvene. Because I got to get dates from all you guys again. Right. So yep. I would let everybody know. All right. That. So I guess. Well, uh, well said. Yep. Um, I don't know if we need a motion. If everybody's in agreement with that. So we don't need a motion to close this meeting. Well, yeah, you got to close. You have to adjourn. <laughs> but as long as I know everybody's happy with trying to come up with a meeting next week. Um, then Brett, uh, real quick question. Can you make time to meet with these three people, whether by phone, I don't care how you do it, email, and everybody come up with the best offer within a week? Oh, yeah. The, we've already made the offers. Um, the okay, only one that's, Janice... that's all you got to answer. Oh, Thank so, you. 100%, sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, uh, Janice and uh, Noreen and... Leanne, you kind of know what you're doing. And um, Brett, will you reach out to each of them? Yeah, either. And like I said, we have Alona in the office every day. Feel free to stop by or, you know, contact me directly through Alona. will give you my personal cell and we can speak or we can set up a meeting at the property, whatever is good for you guys. Well, you have everybody's email address and uh, all this information. So I do. And the leases are there ready to sign already. So if you want to just stop by and take care of it, that's an option as well. But I think what the commission is going to want to see when we reconvene is what was offered to Janice, what was offered to Leanne, what was offered right. to Maureen, and where we're at with everything. So, and can I, if we, if we're able to work out lease agreements, can I just send the, I'll email those to you, kind of showing that we worked something out in good faith. Would that kind of satisfy everybody? Or yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Yep. So then let's make that the goal. That that'd be I think best for everybody. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, you want to go for adjourn?
Yes, I uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll, I'll second. I'll bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. All right, everybody's in agreement. All right, adjourn. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Nice meeting you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Bye, 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 everybody. Good luck, all. Bring yeah. it together. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs>